How's it going everybody and welcome to my 2022 Porsche 911 GTS and this latest version is quite a bit different than past GTS's but I think for most people they don't really understand what GTS stands for it's always referred to as the sweet spot and though that's kind of a nice descriptive term it doesn't really tell you what it's like to own or drive so I'm gonna try my best here to kind of tackle that and uh, hopefully give you guys a good sense but before we do any of that I want you guys to check this car out in a little bit more detail so check this out All right, guys, so before we get into the video and talk about the five things that I love about my GTS, uh, I figured we would talk a little bit about the spec itself, what the car cost, and also how I optioned it, because I think it adds a little bit of context. And to help, I brought this copy here of the window sticker, <laughs> so we can have some accuracy. All right, so here we go. The car by itself, with no boxes checked, comes out to $136,000 and $700. <laughs> so, sorry, $136,700. Um, you know, that's not too bad, but also keep in mind, like about 12, 15 years ago, a GT3 cost about $130,000. So, you can kind of see how things have up leveled. Um, now, what are the main uh options that i got i think that's what we'll talk about because this option list is pretty long and i don't want to bore you guys but mainly let's talk about the blue paint because this is shark blue and i'm sorry to say but on camera this color just does not pop like it does in person i mean it looks good but in person this really pops and you'll know it when you see one but it better be good because i paid a whopping here we go three thousand two hundred and seventy dollars for this paint job it's a lot of money, so I better like it, and I, I do, <laughs> so that's good. Um, next thing, this does have the GTS interior package with chalk, which is actually a pretty nice uh, package. I mean, it includes all the suede and the deviated stitching, uh, the chrono package, and all that good stuff. So that was $4,530. That was a steal, considering the options. Um, what else we got? This particular car comes with rear axle steering. That is a performance must. I highly recommend you always check that box. This also has Porsche Dynamic chassis control, uh, which um, comes out to $3,170. Mm. The rear axle steering is $2,090. So you can kind of see right there, that's almost five and a half grand right there. But again, in the name of performance. I also spoke uh, about the carbon fiber roof in my um, original video that I set up for the spec itself. It was kind of a coin flip, but I'm glad I got it. It adds just enough contrast to the card. It goes with the black and blue theme, but this particular aesthetic performance, we'll call it performance add-on cost me $3,890. That's a lot of money. I'm wondering if I should have unchecked that box, but that's okay. Um, it's here now. <laughs> so let's see. Also, we got the spider rims. I did want to talk on that for a second, which 
you know, this typically, um, this spec typically comes with the uh, Turbo S wheels, which is, um, you know, it's, it's a great add-on for the GTS models, but it means it's a center lock instead of the five lug. And I didn't want to deal with center locking issues. I, I like to be able to remove my wheels when I want to, if I want to change the brakes, if I want to clean the rims, if I get a flat tire, I want to be doing all that stuff myself, not be at the mercy of a tow truck and a dealer somewhere on the road. Um, also, I did not get um, the PCCBs because, well, I mean, it's not a full-time track car. The PCCBs are eight grand. It kind of didn't make sense to me. So I just got the regular turbo. Uh, it's, they're actually turbo steel brakes, uh, but they're fantastic and they do a great, great job. And that was zero cost. It just comes with it. Um, let's see what else we got. The 18 way seats. Uh, I don't think I should have gotten the 18 way seats, but they did cost $3,030. You could probably get away with the, just the four way. If you're, um, if you're honest with yourself, um, I did get the side skirts in matte black here. This is an option that a lot of people don't check, but in this particular case, I decided to get it because I think it gives the car a little bit of a better look, a little bit of a better aerodynamic stance kind of closer to the gt3 but this option did cost 1290 dollars and let's see the only other thing i think that is worth noting is the premium package i highly recommend you get the premium package if you're going to you're going to receive for your three thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars surround view cameras so cameras up front back and on the mirrors and on the center display when you're parking it's really really helpful you're gonna be able to get the storage package, which helps with, basically it's just a foot net, well, little cubby holder thing. Um, but it does give you power folding mirrors, which is nice. And you get the Bose sound system, which I highly recommend the Bose. The Burmeister was about five grand. You don't really need that, but if you have the five grand, I hear great things. And the last thing that comes with the uh, premium package is LCA, which is Lane Change Assist. That's helpful because if you are used to driving cars with blind spots, it's hard to turn your neck and look. This will let you know that there's a car next to you and help you make sure not to make a big mistake. So anyway, that is $176,570 worth of options and car. But that's not what I paid because we are in a crazy market. And in this market, I had to pay a $25,000 ADM, which Though not fun, it actually turns out to be a pretty good deal considering when I actually got the allocation. Most ADM was around 35 to 40. So I guess I saved a little money, I don't know. But either way, you're looking at a $200,000 car um, and uh, look, it, it, it has to feel like it, it has to be special. And I think with the options that I chose, I could tell you that this particular one really does. So. Yeah, that isn't exactly gonna tell you how it feels to drive, but we're gonna cover that next. And by the way, I'm gonna take this opportunity to say, if you don't mind uh, and you find this video very interesting, please go ahead and give it a like, uh, share and subscribe, all the typical stuff you guys know what to do. And with all that being said, let's get to the driving impressions. So, though there are a lot of reasons to love the GTS, my top five will begin with this one simple but important factor, which is the suspension dampening. This has PASM suspension on it, and this is the soft setting, and we're on a pretty bumpy road right now. And honestly, the car is doing fine. I mean, it's soaking up the bumps relatively well, and it's doing a pretty good job of reminding you that it is a sports car, so it is a little bit stiff, but I'm gonna call it more sharp than anything else. And at the same time, it's not really uncomfortable, which is kind of a tough trick to do. And I think the GTS does it well. Now, even if I were to put it into the stiffer setting, the difference there is that it would be incremental in, in sharpness, but still pretty livable. And I haven't tracked this car yet. Uh, and I do plan to, and once I do that, I'll, I'll put out a video. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that even tracking it, I mean, it's probably going to feel relatively soft um, for what it is, because again, it's not the GT3 and it's not super track oriented and focused. This really is a car you could live with every day. 
The second thing I love about this GTS comes down to the fact that it has so much low end torque. 420 foot pounds worth of torque to be exact. And that means two things. One, it means sure you can roll on the throttle and you're just gone. <laughs> From wherever you were, it will just rocket you forward. But the second thing it means is the car feels really, really drivable, especially on the daily. So I personally really appreciate that because it makes it feel fun and special and yet practical all at the same time. So the third thing that I love about the GTS is essentially just the handling characteristics. The car has so much mechanical grip, it's amazing. Not just that, but you know, it comes with PS4s which are absolutely complementary to the suspension. You get the sense that you can handle any canyon road or track day and a lot of that is because of the tire but also a lot of that is for the fact that there's so much weight over that rear axle so you got a ton of grip coming out of corners which means you can really get on the throttle super early it's a, a unique feeling and it's unique to the 911 but i completely enjoy it the fourth thing i love about my gts is the steering feel i mean Gone are the days of hydraulic racks, we all know that. But for an electronic rack, this is one of the best in the business. It has really just natural feeling weight to it, especially around how much input you're putting in. Um, it doesn't actually feel like it's <clears throat> fighting me or anything. It actually feels like it's trying to communicate more so what the tires are doing. The only time I have a complaint, if any, is if I'm really going for it and pushing, uh, in a straight line, mind you, there seems to be a little bit of a dead zone. And that kind of makes sense because what happens is you are on all the, the power which pushes the weight to the back, which lifts the front up a little bit from a weight perspective. And yeah, the front gets light. So in that particular scenario, that's not really the steering's fault but that's the only time I feel like I don't know what the front wheels are doing. But other than that, it's pretty spectacular and uh, really adds to the engagement level of driving the car. So the fifth and final reason for loving this GTS is kind of a surprising one. It really comes down to the practicality of the car itself. I am really surprised with how much stuff you can fit into the front trunk. Not just that, but this thing comes with back seats. I mean, you can put your little ones back there. You can use it as extra storage. It's amazing. And this one particular thing that I didn't really see coming is, this is my most fuel efficient vehicle. Now the window sticker says 20 is 20 miles per gallon is the combined city and highway driving. But I recently did a road trip that was about 400 miles. And when I got back, I looked at my average and I'm not kidding you when I say this, it averaged 26 miles a gallon. It was just mind boggling. And it's not like I drove slow. So really impressed with this car's just everyday usability, the practicality, um, just the way it makes you feel. And when you take all five of these factors together, what other car does this? Not many. So with that guys, uh, I think we're going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching if you've been uh, paying attention to this point and uh, happy to answer any questions in the comments below. And until next time, enjoy the drive.